Gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly known as GERD, and related disorders due to acid hypersecretion are one of the most prevalent disorders of GI tract in our world nowadays. Recent data estimates show that over 30% adults in Western countries suffer from these problems. This means out of every 10 people you meet, 3 are likely to be suffering from one or other kind of acid-related disorders. And if you're one of them, it's very likely that you have taken drugs like Pantop, Pantocid, Prilosec, Nexium, Zantac, etc. What are these drugs? Well, these drugs belong to a common family known as the proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors, also known as PPIs, stop the secretion of acid in your stomach. They do so by blocking the main acid-producing channels in the cells of your stomach. And they are quite effective in that. You may not know it, but the introduction of proton pump inhibitors into clinical practice has revolutionized the management of acid reflux diseases. PPIs remain the leading evidence-based therapy for acid-related diseases, including GERD, peptic ulcer disease, dyspepsia, anti-inflammatory drug-induced ulcer, helicobacter pylori infection, and hypersecretory disorders such as Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Earlier, the only treatment available for these used to be highly invasive and unreliable surgeries. Proton pump inhibitors have been on the market since late 1980s and remain till date the most potent drugs for the treatment of acid-related diseases. Even though they have proven to be highly safe, no drug exists without a side effect or a drawback. Decades of extensive research and trials have clearly shown long-term side effects of PPIs. But the fact is, PPIs are the most abused drug in the world. Hello, I'm Dr. Umar Malik and welcome to Med Simplified. In our previous videos, we talked about how and why acid reflux occurs and the various foods and preventive measures to control acid reflux. In case you haven't watched those videos, click the link in the description box to watch those videos first to have a better understanding of this topic. In this video, we'll be talking about the potential side effects of proton pump inhibitors abuse and overuse. So let's begin. In 2018, 100 million prescriptions were written for PPIs in United States alone. This will roughly give you an idea about the amount of overuse. In March 2013, the American College of Gastroenterology released guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of GERD. These guidelines provided some insight into the monitoring for long-term consequence of chronic PPI use. In a nutshell, long-term consequence of chronic PPI use can be grouped into two main categories, malabsorption and infections. Let's take a deeper look. The first potential long-term consequence of chronic PPI use is malabsorption of key minerals in the body, namely calcium and magnesium. Deficiency of calcium leads to hypocalcemia. Calcium serves as an important role in bone health and formation, as it is a key component and a structural element of bone. Also, bone material is a major reservoir for calcium and contains around 99% of the body's calcium. Long-term PPI use has been associated with hypocalcemia, which means decreased calcium in the body. This can also lead to confusion or memory loss, muscle spasms, numbness and tingling in the hands, feet and face, depression, hallucinations, muscle cramps, weak and brittle nails, easy fracturing of bones. Studies have shown there is an increased risk of osteoporosis and decreased bone mineral density with a 35% increased risk of fractures. Also, the risk of fractures increases with the duration and dosage of PPI use. Health Canada issued an alert in April 2013 stating that patients with existing risk factors for osteoporosis should be monitored closely and should also receive only short-term PPI therapy, that too at the lowest effective dose. Currently, FDA also has similar recommendations. This is a matter of great concern, especially in the elderly, who are often affected by multiple comorbidities and already have very fragile bones. Overuse of PPI can also lead to hypomagnesemia. In 2011, the FDA released a warning regarding low serum magnesium levels associated with long-term use of PPIs. This happened to approximately 1% of patients. Symptoms of hypomagnesemia include seizures, heart problems, blood pressure problems, muscle weakness, even mental health problems. Hypomagnesemia is also potentially fatal. Studies show that hypomagnesemia is generally resolved when the PPI was discontinued, 
and reoccurred soon after the PPI was started. FDA Drug Safety Communications warns of the risk of hypomagnesemia and recommends that the doctors must monitor magnesium levels in patients who are on PPI therapy, once before starting the therapy and periodically thereafter. Now let's look at the second group of major side effects that can occur with overuse of PPIs and that is frequent infections. In addition to decreased magnesium and calcium absorption, patients on long-term PPI therapy may be at an increased risk of infection. The acid produced by the stomach is not just important for digestion of food but it is also important for the defense mechanism of the stomach against harmful bacteria that enter our digestive system. So while PPIs effectively reduce acid, they also decrease the natural defense mechanism that our body has against foreign invaders. In 2013, American College of Gastroenterologists guidelines clearly warned about the risk of increased infection of Clostridium difficile and pneumonia on long-term BPI use. In a 2005 study, researchers found that patients had around three times increased risk of acquiring C. difficile and were more likely to have recurrent infections compared to patients not on PPI. And in 2012, FDA issued a statement that warns the patients and healthcare professionals to consider Clostridium difficile infection if a patient takes a PPI and experiences persistent diarrhea. In case of PPI and pneumonia, evidence is a bit conflicting. Although data shows that patients on PPI are 2.2 times more likely to develop chest infections compared to normal public, Long-term consequences have not been properly understood. With around 100 million prescriptions being filled out for PPIs every year, vigilance on part of doctors, healthcare professionals and patients is recommended to prevent chest-related and gut-related problems. Now let's look at another common side effect that occurs when we stop the PPI therapy, which is rebound acid hypersecretion. What many physicians fail to advise their patients is that once you stop taking PPIs after taking them for about 2 to 3 months, you will experience episodes of rebound acid reflux similar to pre-treatment levels. This happens because the acid gets suppressed for so long that once PPI is stopped, the stomach goes into an overdrive and produces massive amounts of acid. And ironically, the only way to relieve this reflux in extreme cases is the PPI themselves. However, this happens exclusively on long-term use. To prevent this, it's important to stick to your physician's decision of the required time period for your PPI's therapy. Do not overuse PPI because if you do, then you will fall into the cycle of extreme reflux whenever you stop taking PPIs. Doctors agree that most patients with severe acid reflux disease need an acid-suppressing drug and they should not be concerned about the side effects. But millions of people who use PPIs for uncertain indications, there is always a risk of inducing the symptoms such as reflux that these drugs are used to treat. So to conclude, PPIs are efficacious and safe. And multiple studies back this claim. They offer overwhelming ease for treatment of various diseases which are previously thought to be unmanageable. Unfortunately, like every other drug, they have an Achilles heel in form of long-term consequences from continued use. Added with the fact that proton pump inhibitors are available with or without a prescription anywhere in the world, with hundreds of millions of people choosing them on a regular basis, it's important that we educate ourselves to effectively prevent those problems. We at MedSimplified believe that like any other drug, you should take the PPIs only for the prescribed amount of time in the prescribed dosage and the prescribed schedule. This will minimize the potential side effects and will help you to move on to non-medication related management of your reflux problems as a long-term alternative. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it taught you something new about PPIs. Do share this video with your friends and family who use PPIs. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We are committed to bringing you more content. You can support us by becoming a member on our YouTube channel and on Patreon. Thank you and see you in the next video.